Okay. Tuesday, since we're talking about Tuesday, Tuesday is Bill Wilson's birthday. So, happy birthday, Bill. Quite a few other announcements in the bulletin. Um, also, there's a weekly calendar in the bulletin as well. So that'll help you keep in line with the things that are going on here. Keeping the service time moving right along, we got the verse of the month that we're going to recite together. Be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 18. Now, in Pastor's absence uh, today, he's away on vacation visiting his daughter in Pennsylvania. We are blessed to have Gary give us the message today. So, um, he did a great job in the earlier service, and I have no doubt he's even going to do better this service. So, not that there was any room for improvement, but you're right on, brother. There's always room for improvement in cello. Okay. All right, with that being said, would you all please rise for our opening hymn? <coughs>
make our beginning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We confess our faith together by reciting the Apostles' Creed. I, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir, Stir up your power, power, O Lord, and come, that by your protection we may be rescued from the threatening perils of our sins and saved by your mighty deliverance. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Isaiah 11 says, A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The royal line of David is like a tree that has been cut down. But just as new branches sprout from a stump, so a new king will arise from among David's servants. Who is this descendant of David that would arise? Who is the king that would come? His name is Jesus, our Savior, whose birth we are preparing to celebrate. Now walk across.
Thank you, music ministry. I'm glad it stopped snowing because you blew the roof off of this place. <laughs> I just want to say thank you for all you do today. And always, please be seated. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Today's psalm, which we recite together responsibly, is Psalm 25, beginning at the first verse. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. In you I trust, O my God. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one whose hope is in you will ever be put to shame, but they will be put to shame who are treacherous without excuse. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are my God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, O Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you are good, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore he instructs sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful for those who keep the demands of his covenant. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be God. May I have the readers come forward, please. reading is taken from Jeremiah 33 verses 14 through 16. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the gracious promise I made to the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line. He will do what is just and right in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. This is the name by which it will be called, the Lord our righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Second reading. St. Paul's first letter to Thessalonians, chapter 3, 9 to 13 verses. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy we have in the presence of our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you again and supply what is lacking in your faith. Now may God, our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus clear the way for us to come to you. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else just as ours does for you. May he strength May, may he strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the gospel this morning. The gospel. 
Gospel according to St. Luke, the 21st chapter. <clears throat> Glory to you, o Lord. There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. Men will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. He told them this parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they sprout their leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that the kingdom of God is near. I tell you the truth. This generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Be careful or your hearts will be weighed down with dissipation, drunkenness, and the anxieties of life. And that day will close on you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all those who live on the face of the whole earth. Be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Congregation may be seated. We have the children come forward, please. in the bag today. All right? Can anyone guess what's in the bag? Candy. <laughs> no, not candy. So sorry. And Keith got out of it. Unfortunately, somebody else took your line. Sorry. Anybody else? What was that? No. Nope. Sophia. Money? Nope. Not money. <laughs> Not money. Think about something that God gave us. Something that he actually put on this earth. 
Skyler, hmm? It's a good guess, but this bag's kind of small. So, no, it's not people, honey. Nick, you're getting warm. He said, please. You're getting warm. You're getting warm. I'm going to get to you, Abby, in a second. Yes. You are red hot. You're very, 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 very warm. Hmm? Yeah, I know. That, that feels bad, right? When somebody beats you to the punch. It's okay, because it's all good. Um, back to you. No. Getting cold now. Getting cold. <laughs> Sophia? No. That's also very good. Ding, ding, ding. Stand up, take a bow. Three branches. Right? What it is, okay, this is a branch, right? That's right, right. Now, the first reading this morning was talking about the branch from David, okay, which is a symbol of our coming Savior. Right? So this branch, which I actually clipped this morning from the tree that we're going to light in a couple of weeks. So sorry, buildings and ground. I was very gentle with it. I did prune it the right way. Okay, so it's not on the rest of the tree. But this branch, okay, is the beginning. It's a symbol, right? It's something that can that part of something very big. How many of you have seen the tree lighting? I've been here in the past for tree lighting here. How many of you have seen the big tree that they light up in the city? You might have seen it on TV or maybe you've even visited it, right? Now that's a really big tree, right? But it started with something like this, right? And that's what the message is telling us today, right? It's a little bit about how one small branch. And you know, I watched the parade. You watched the parade, and who was at the end of the parade? Remember? <laughs> that guy with the red suit, you know, with the beard, right? Who was that? Santa. Santa, yes. That's okay. Well, it's easy for us we get, you know, we get distracted, all right, and, when, and that's that's the message I'm going to have for the grown-ups today, all right. It's, it's it's a little bit more about distraction, but this, yes, Skyler. I watched the cheerleaders. Cheerleaders, yes, yes, they're part of it too. Also a distraction, but that's okay. <laughs> that, that, that is okay, right? Carissa, you watch the parade too. What was your favorite part? The parade. Nice. Very nice. But anyway, this branch, right? It's a symbol, right? Why did God put trees on the earth? Ed. So we can have oxygen. Yes. Something that's important. Oxygen, yes. We don't think about that right away, but you're absolutely right. Kevin? What are, what are trees? Why are trees here? How about what kind of protection they give? Right? Right? What, what, what gets built in trees? What, what kinds of things get built in trees? Yes. Well, houses do come from trees. Not what I had in mind, but you're, 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 warm, you're warm. Sophia? Habitat. Mm, let's keep it a little simpler. Let's talk about one of God's creatures, right? What, what, builds, what builds things inside of trees? Yes. 
Yes, right. You're right, right? They provide protection and shelter, right? In the summertime, when you have other trees, right, they, they give us shade. They give us relief from the hot days, right? But anyway, that is something that God made, okay? And this reminds us, this little branch, all right, this is Jesus coming into the world for us, right? And he came into this world, why? Don't be bashful. Yeah. Hmm? Okay, you're on, you're on the right track. That's right. That, that's true too. But it is for the forgiveness of all our sins, right? That's what's important. That's the most important thing. That he has prepared a place for us that we can always go to. So, can you bow your heads this morning and let's join me in prayer. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. we thank you Amen. for giving us God's love, giving us God's love. And, his and his protection and for blessing us, and for blessing us. with all things good. Thank you for teaching us, Thank you for teaching us. Patience, to patience to wait for you to be born, to be born. and for you to come back for us and, you to come back for us. and be with us forever. And with us forever. May we grow in you, May you grow in and be part of you, and be part of you. Just as your branch, just as your branch, as part of the tree. As part of the tree. Please bless our family and friends. Please bless our family and friends. And those who have no one to pray for them. And those who have no one to pray for them. Thank you for choosing us. Thank you for choosing us. To shine your light. Shine your light. On the whole world. Amen. 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 All right. We have Sunday school today, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. To the races. Well, no. go nice and slow. Good morning again, my brothers and sisters. Good Happy New Year. Happy Grace, mercy, and peace be with you all this morning, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Today's sermon text comes from the gospel message just read this morning, Luke 21, verses 25 through 28, and verse 34. There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. Men will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, Stand up and lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Be careful, or your hearts will be weighed down with dissipation, drunkenness, and the anxieties of life. And that day will close on you unexpectedly like a trap. As I was doing research in uh, preparing this sermon, I came across some, some interesting uh, Pearls of wisdom, right? Talking about the season of Advent. The season of Advent, in the words of Audrey West, is a sticky note reminder to the church that God is doing a new thing. Again. Put another way, by David Lowe's, 
Advent is a season that messes with our sense of time. And I guess he says that because Advent begins with passages about the end of history before moving in later weeks to prepare us for the coming of the Christ child and the dawn of a new age. In other words, the season starts with lessons about why Jesus came and from what and from whom he was saving us. The season of the advent of Christ, which is intended to be a thoughtful time where we reflect on the hope that comes along with the faithful promises of God. The season tends at times to be overshadowed in the world by the forces of retail. You know, it seems that retail's Christmas season starts earlier and earlier every year. Lynn told me that she saw Christmas stuff in Sam's Club in September or early October. And you know, I don't always pay attention to stuff like that, but it might have even been earlier than that. Some, some people do that, you know, it seems like there's no, um, there's no appropriate place anymore. So this becomes a wave of distractions from the, from the true meaning of Christmas. We emphasize the need for finding bargains now, for decorations and other material things that are just not made to last. The radio stations get in on this and they catch this early wave by playing Christmas music well before Thanksgiving now. I remember when they at least waited until Thanksgiving. This particular year, we have an added emphasis on how much longer we need to wait for things ordered during this season. I work in the packaging industry and we're seeing this affect our business with component shortages caused in part by delayed cargo delivery, fewer laborers to keep production lines moving and making our parts, which causes delays down the line that affect the food packaging, the automotive, the electronics industries, and medical device <coughs> packaging, just to name a few. People are growing impatient and uncomfortable with all the uncertainty that results from the delays that threaten our supply chain. But a little more on distraction later on. Let us dive into our text this morning. So, to set the scene of the gospel for you, in the 21st chapter of Luke, Jesus is teaching in an outer court of the temple, all the while being challenged by the scribes and elders as to his authority to teach. So leading up to verse 25, we observe a few things. He speaks of the widow's offering of two small copper coins. She offers all that she has. He foretells destruction of the temple, of wars and persecution, and the destruction of Jerusalem. In Luke 21, verse 25, there will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars on the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. Jesus is focusing on events relating to the end of the world, much like in Isaiah chapter 13, verse 10. The stars of heaven and their constellations will not show their light. The rising sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. That doesn't sound so very full of hope, does it? Today's anguish of nations in perplexity is the reality of wars and political turbulence and the confusion brought on as a result, a distraction from the truth. And just as in Jesus' day, sides today are not inclined to listen to each other. We put up walls as soon as the first words are spoken. Signs in the sun, the moon and the stars, and the roaring and tossing of the sea. And thanks for the song music ministry, by the way, that the, the part where we talk about mountains will fall, you know, and the seas will roar. I love that song, thank you. But anyway, those signs can be seen in the wildfires, floods, and tornadoes that have marked this past year alone 
as well as many before. God is light. When his blessing is removed and replaced with his wrath, light is replaced by darkness. The lack of light is a sign of the Lord's coming. In verse 26, men will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. The reaction here moves from confusion to fear. Again, in Isaiah chapter 34, verse 4, all the stars in the sky will be dissolved and the heavens rolled up like a scroll. All the starry host will fall like withered leaves from the vine, like shriveled figs from the fig tree. And that passage also ties into the fig tree parable that we read this morning in uh, verses 29 and 30. In today's world, though, it could be the current global pandemic. First COVID-19, then the Delta variant, and now the Omicron variant that could represent us fainting from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world. Here Jesus was speaking of the sense of breathlessness that we experience when we encounter something that surprises us because we're not prepared for it. Jesus is further reminding us in verse 35 that no one escapes the final judgment. We read in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3, while people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. Here's a reminder that by human reason and strength, no one can escape God's righteous judgment and scrutiny. But when we accept the promise of Jesus as our Savior and confess our sins, we accept also in Jesus shelter from God's wrath. So in verse 27, at that time, they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now it's starting to get a little bit more like hope, right? This is the season of hope, I think. Now we're told by Jesus about the visible return of the crucified and glorified Christ. Last week during Christ the King Sunday, we heard from the prophet Daniel in the first reading, chapter 7, verse 13. In my vision at night, I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man, coming with the clouds of heaven. And again in verse 14, he was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. In the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 31 through 34, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne all the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on the right, come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. You know, I can remember back from my days uh, serving the music ministry during Advent season, we used to sing a song, uh, Prepare the Way. Prepare the way, prepare the way, prepare the way for the coming of the sun. Now, verse 27 reminds me of the bridge part of that song. In a blaze of glory, he will come. In the blink of an eye, the deed will be done. In a sky filled with thunder, the clouds will part. And on a white charger will ride God's heart. Getting more hopeful now? Okay. Verse 28. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. So here is where the hope comes in. 
This is the essence of God's gift of his only son to us. One that was blameless, sinless, put to death on the cross, triumphant over Satan and that death, and resurrected and seated at the right hand of the Father, coming in glory to judge the living and the dead. Yeah, that familiar sounding phrase we just recited together in the Apostles' Creed, right? Our weekly affirmation of God's promise to us. When we pray daily, we should reflect on especially this portion of the Creed and perhaps recite the Creed daily before our feet hit the floor as we get out of bed. Verse 36 says, Be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. Now the way that we remain prepared and watchful, as Jesus tells us in this verse, is by persevering in prayer. From the epistle reading for today, especially verse 10, night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you again and supply what is lacking in your faith. Paul is cheering on the Thessalonians, giving them encouragement and at the same time instruction on how to prepare, encouraging them to seek the truth in his gospel news about our triumphant Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And also in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 6, So then, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. The sleep, the asleep that's being referred to here is not death, but a life in sin, which is a life in darkness. Verse 34, be careful or your hearts will be weighed down with dissipation, drunkenness and the anxieties of life. And that day will close on you unexpectedly like a trap. So here is where the most important part of the message is. He is warning his followers about being dulled by worldly concerns and the distractions of daily life. And once again, that little word, distraction, creeps up in here. Which brings me to something that, uh, some recent distraction that I experienced. Um, we recently celebrated the 30th birthday of my son, Dan. And some of you know him from his days as a bass player in the youth music ministry here. Uh, Lynn and I ordered a gift card from Duluth Trading for his birthday present. Although we ordered it a week before his birthday, we didn't have it to give to him at the time that we were celebrating together. And I have to admit, I was admittedly stressed out a little that we had no gift to present him. But Lynn, she gently reminded me and correctly predicted that he would be okay with that. And sure enough, Dan was not at all disappointed. He took our promise of a gift with grace and gratitude and reassured both of us that he was fine with a late gift. In fact, this is what he said. Everything is about celebrating my birthday with people who love me. He is approaching his upcoming wedding with the same gracious attitude. I will not worry about those who cannot be there on my wedding day. I will enjoy the people who are there celebrating with us. You know, we the church, we're considered the bride of Christ, right? Danny and Samantha's outlook on their wedding celebration is one that we should all adopt when we consider our relationship with Jesus. Grateful to be there with him. Grateful for his atoning sacrifice and grateful for not the hope, but the promise of life everlasting. Here's the part where I say again to Lynn, you're right, I'm wrong, I'm sorry. <laughs> and we were, if we were listening to the songs this morning, the praise songs, two things jumped out at me. 
We know that hope is never lost, right? It, that was one song. That was beautiful, by the way. And up from the ashes, hope will arise, right? What a great closing praise song. That was fantastic. And let me thank you again for that. <laughs> The distractions of this world today, such as the lengthened retail Christmas season, unemployment, hate crimes, racist ideologies, death-dealing illnesses, displacement by terror, or anything else that traps people in fear or despair, these things lead to a life of darkness. These are things that we anticipate or wait for. Anticipating is something that's a little more negative in connotation, all right? But thankfully, our gospel today offers a different outlook on waiting, a different focus on what we wait for, who we wait for. The coming of our Savior at the end of the Advent season and his triumph over death and ultimately his coming in glory at the end time to triumph over all the powers of heaven and earth. We as Christians should be alert, ready for the coming of the end. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 36, we are reminded that, but about the day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. So we ready ourselves by repenting so that we may embrace the wondrous gifts of forgiveness of our sins and again, that promise of life everlasting in his kingdom, which we are reminded about weekly in word and sacrament, although we will not be having sacrament today. We hold fast to the covenant by loving our God with all of our heart and mind and soul, and loving our neighbors as ourselves, taking opportunities as they present themselves through the Holy Spirit to help others in need, physically as well as spiritually, and telling others that may not yet know about God's love for us. It is then that we look for the light with the coming of the Son of Humanity the Christ whose promised future makes all the difference for today. When we remember that promise, the darkness will fall behind us. And so, brothers and sisters, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, brother. We will now continue our worship service with our prayers, our gifts, and our offerings. Mm -hmm.
and hearts to trust your abiding word. You declared that the days were coming when you would accomplish our salvation, and in your time you caused your son, the righteous branch, to spring up for David. By your grace, keep us joined as branches to Christ, that we might bear fruit until the day he returns in glory. For he lives and reigns with you on the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my sins unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray to you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace.